I moved it. <laughs> no, but let's say you let's say something moves it. The question is, is there a difference between this and this? Does this particle know that it went around somebody else? Okay, now, what do you mean by no? Does the two particle state look different after I do it compared to before I do it? Now, no particle that we live with in our world gives a shit about that. Electrons don't care, protons don't care, neutrons don't care. Nothing that we're made out of. If you take a proton and you move it around another proton or around anything else and bring it back to where it started, nobody cares. It doesn't change anything. But these, the myronas that we're talking about in the lab, the ones that you are seeing in this device, if you go like this, it's not the same state anymore. They remember. They remember that one of them went around the other one. And what do you mean by remember? That means that, that, that the quantum state of this two-particle system will change when you go like this, such that you've encoded now, look, you know that these things happen. Imagine this is a table, and I have string hanging down under, under the table into the third dimension, like this, okay? And I go like this. Well, of course it remembers. You look under the table, and you see that they're tangled up. I keep going around and around and around, and the cord gets tangled down underneath. So in, 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 in our world, we know about this kind of thing. You, you call it like, look at your shirt. Your shirt is made out of all this thread, which has all gone around each other. All the threads have gone around each other. And they remember who went around who to encode, to encode the, the, the weave. And if, if you could make a particle in quantum mechanics that would remember that it went around somebody else, picture the string hanging down from the table. It remembered that you went around. You could encode information, and now you can ask. Remember, in quantum mechanics, you make a measurement, and, and you lose all the information. Yeah. Okay, now you don't want to measure it. You've got knots, but you've got knots hanging under the table. I've tied these whole things. I've got you know, all these particles, like this right, and I go like this, and I put them all like this, and the and the whole thing is done like this, and I have to do this in my computer, right? This is what I'm doing in my quantum computer. I'm doing this with all of these Majorana particles. Okay, and now you say. Can I compute something? Well, just look under the table at what I've done. You've tangled. I've tangled them all up, and they remember. They remember because all that information, every move I made, is under the table in the rope. Right. Okay. Now you can ask, if I measure the system, do I immediately untangle the rope? Mm -hmm. No. No. So even though it's a quantum system, a measurement, what, what we'll call, what I'll have to say, a local measurement, meaning I measure something like about this guy. If I do some kind of overall measurement, but that's not how the universe works. The universe like heat comes in and it, and it goes like this. This is how the universe measures things, okay? So these are local measurements, okay? If I make a local measurement, I can't untangle the knots in the table. And that's why these qubits are robust. The qubits are robust because a local measurement cannot untangle the rope. Right. So if we could make these particles, which have never existed before, and which Majorana didn't, didn't even think about, but these happen to be Majorana particles, but they're a very special kind of Majorana particles called non-abelian. Non-abelian. Abelian means that you forget, okay, when you do this. It doesn't make, make any difference. But if they're non-abelian, then this tangles up the rope, and you get the, the braid under the table. And the braid contains the information and the computation. And that's why Majoranas could, assuming this all works, <laughs> make a much more robust quantum computer. Now what's really astounding with this activity compared to what everybody else is doing is we have to invent a particle that has never existed before and then use it for computing. And it's, uh, you know, it's a profoundly more exotic, you know, challenge than what than what's going on uh, with other approaches to quantum computing.